Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kill Screen. By Roll, this is based around their original game called Chrome, a cyberpunk, tech noir, cosmic horror role playing game. I am here with my amazing players. I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves. First up, Brandy. Hi, everybody. I am Brandy Rose, pronouns they, them. And today on Kill Screen, I will be playing Viper, also they, them. Drac. Hi, uh, I'm Drac or Draconix. Uh, he, they for me, but also for my character KC. A, um, you know, uh, you'll meet them. Uh, they're a character. <laughs> Perfect. Let's go ahead and get into this game. Welcome to the future. Its existence is one tiny scratch errant against the thousands of scores tracing the records of time. That one tiny scratch, that tiny distortion, leads us into a world trapped in darkness, a forgotten echo, a world offline. The future used to be many things for us, reassuring, promising, hopeful. The future was a gem waiting to be uncovered until an infestation of information systems erupted, ripping through servers and demolishing bandwidths. And for the first time in centuries, the entire world went offline. Meanwhile, mysterious entities emerge from the empty spaces left by the previously on online world, materializing from the gaping wound of this abyss. Now known as the void space, come the demons. And with no interconnected systems to form a widespread knowledge of their appearance, their purpose, their intent, the world turned to superstition. No one knows who or what demons are, or what the void space is. No one knows how the world even ended, and the future has been muddled. Now overtaken by megacorporations and powerful cult consortiums, the closer you are to power, the closer you are to answers. Whether those answers are through the void or through exploiting the people who stand in fear of it, well, that's to be explored. But that's where you all come in. New LA has called you, its operators, to explore this world, live on the bleeding edge of life, and burn yourselves into the record of time as bioevolutionary mercenaries for the mysterious entity otherwise known as Control. This takes us to the Outer Wards. The Outer Wards are a desolate wasteland. Forgotten structures jut out of the sand, explored by thrill seekers and those curious about what was lost. This is a realm of warfare, conflict, sand bike gangs, firefights uh, that light the horizon like fireflies to those looking off in the distance. Viper and KC. You are carving the skyline, kicking up puffs of sand behind you, driving through the iris of the setting sun in an off-road vehicle. I want you both to tell me what we see and who is driving. I was going to say that is the important question. <laughs> oh. I think maybe we rock, paper, scissor between who who drives because i feel that is the only way for us to come to a consensus so if you don't mind let's actual rock paper scissors yep okay, okay. game okay rock paper, paper scissors. scissors shoot <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> one um, more time one more time rock paper paper scissors, scissors. Shoot. okay you're driving fine i know actually driving. I would not want to drive. You don't want to drive? Yeah. I get to drive. This yeah. is amazing. I love losing. So yes, so then I will go first. Viper, who is so enmeshed with biomechanic enhancements that at first glance, it might look more like a robot with a human face until you realize that Shimmer is actually skin. It's just got so many circuits interwoven that it gives it a metallic sheen. Of course, not not hindered exactly by the aluminum and white like paint across their eyes that helps uh, reflect uh, light away from their face, actually, with uh, small enhancements going into 
their skin and a uh, otherwise like black um, cat suit under which one can see there is a some lights going down one leg under the cat suit and that is the cybernetic uh, prosthetic leg on their left and Viper drives like every vehicle they drive is a vehicle they stole which frankly it's not not possible but what is stealing in a junkyard really and that is viper meanwhile in the back we have kc they are also adorned with cybernetics but they don't even try to make it seem natural the entirety of the um torso as well as their right and left arm are completely cybernetic um covered up in uh, military garbs of some sort definitely not his they definitely started from somewhere somewhere someone most of them are quite ill-fitting especially for his arms they kind of stretch around the metal of it all wearing combat um combat thick combat boots uh again uh way too oversized but like tied around a waist com um cargo pants and you can see that within the underneath their shirt and then the jacket the large bomber jacket that went over it some bulges that definitely look like very conspicuous probably weaponry hidden underneath there again they don't seem to try to hide the fact that they are arms in more ways than one and they end up back with a a old game dude just <laughs> playing it um playing with it cursing under their breath as they lose once again on level five just can't get past that level for some reason um hanging from their neck is a mask of some sort uh kind of look from the pipes and wires coming out of it it seems to be have some kind of medical use um, most likely to aid breathing as well as double as if there is ever a gas attack, a gas mask and the like. But they added some bits and pieces to it so that it lights up. It kind of um, flickers and lights, changes color depending on the game that they're currently playing on their game, dude. <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. You finally get close to completing your level in the game when Viper okay. hits okay. a rock <laughs> and forces your hand. And you lose again. Viper, I was close. I was right. I saw the flagpole. I was right there. <sighs> Look, you want a smooth ride? You drive. Fine, fine, I guess. It's, I guess it's intense training. If I can win on this, I can win anywhere. Exactly. Okay, what do again. they say about someone who blames, I don't know, their tools? I'm not blaming the tools. I'm blaming your terrible driving. Why are you, do, are you so excited to drive when you, you can barely do it in a straight line first of all you can't drive in a straight line here there's no there's no road Th what do you want me to do have you even ever seen a road i don't think i've ever seen a proper road that was still nice everything's <sighs> torn up this is this this is relatively smooth sailing thank you i'll have you know that i was the best driver out of my training class well, you're the only one in your training class what viper fails to admit is that everybody else died yes you hit another bump in the cart <laughs> Damn it. Nice. Viper's the best because Viper's the only one that didn't kick the bucket <laughs> driving. And that'll make it, that's the kind of world we live in. You hit another bump and as you land, uh, you hear a loud chirp and it is a familiar chirp. It is the chirp of your communicator. It is a small internal system that connects you to control. You kind of tap your cybernetic communicator and it plays aloud your mission. You hear strange markings have been popping up around town by a group named Vamp. This would normally be ignored, but important and powerful members of control have been found on the outskirts of the outer wards days before they're supposed to take on mission. These are not the only murders in the area, but we can't keep losing people. Go and investigate the Vamps, find out who's murdering agents. To do that, you must find the needle find arachne find the needle and find arachne hey casey did you get yours did you get that yeah yeah i got that um arachne do i do we know arachne do i know arachne uh both of you can make me an intellect check if you would like oh okay Ooh, hello okay yes intellect so... check that's gonna be fun yeah, so with making an intellect check, Chrome is very interesting in that you are going to roll a D100 and your goal is to roll below your intellect stat. Equal to or above fails and you will take stress if you fail. I'm not a very intelligent character. Uh, <laughs> so let's see how this goes. I am mid-level intelligent. My intellect, the, the roll to beat is a 35 and I rolled a 27. Uh, nice. My roll to beat was a 15 and I rolled a 55. So it's okay. I have no clue. 
We can't all be perfect. I'm really perfect anyway in other ways, so. Amazing. So perfect. So Viper, you succeeded. Casey, you failed. Casey, go ahead and take a point of stress. Stress is wearing down on your conviction level. Um, you start out with 20 conviction. And as things go down, these checks that you will make will rely on how much conviction you have left. So we're whittling down on it for now. Viper, you succeeded. You know what the needle is. The needle is a nightclub that is on the banks of the Outer Wards. Of course I know what that full is. Of, full of new LA's finest partiers. This giga warehouse is a frenzied place full of nihilists. Uh, it is a frenetic psychological landscape masking as a rave warehouse. But something that you also know, specific to this rave warehouse, is that it actually lies on a moving train. So you will have to catch a train in order to get into the club. Nice. Viper is grinning and what one couldn't catch earlier but can catch now. Uh, which I also n uh, nicely was able to edit and add in my uh, role character sheet, because I realized I hadn't done that earlier. Uh, Viper grins, and when Viper grins, you notice that their mouth stretches slightly too long for a smile that is just human, or like original, and what come comes into light are two almost white chrome-colored fangs that are obviously uh, little mechanics, hence the name Viper. They drip slightly with something that is neon green that um, obviously isn't harming Viper themselves. And uh, they catch in the light as Viper grins and revs the engine and takes a very sharp turn towards Where the city and goes, we have a train to catch. And just like revs off. Okay, um, well then, I'm just gonna go along with the ride. He's gonna gra grab on because Viper can't Just drive. Grab shit. on, we're going so, so fast. The best part about Viper is that in Viper's head, Viper's in the movie. Viper yeah. Viper lives for the drama. Viper's in their own noir. Everybody else just has to deal. <laughs> so you get a very intense look of Viper, who is no longer listening to anything. Yes, uh, as Viper turns the music up, in, in their mind. In their head. Um, <laughs> yes, in their head. They're having this moment to themselves. Life Casey, is a you are holding, yes, you are listening to the car soundtrack. As <laughs> Casey grabs onto the outer bars of this car, you put your hand out and try to brace yourself. I would like for you to make a body save. Oh, so you funny. Try to Please resist. fail. God damn it. Try to resist. First damage taken. <laughs> uh, okay. Um... <laughs> Okay. Trying to resist the effects of this immediate shift and the kick up in speed, uh, even just staring down at your game is causing your eyes to imagine come this out is of how focus. you die. I'm I'm okay at this, but let's see. Uh, thirty eight over thirty five, so I fail with that. Okay, Bonk your head. Now I would like to introduce to you a mechanic. There is a mechanic that Chrome has called burn. And you can burn, to, you can spend your conviction to lower your check and save so that you pass. But you are spending conviction to do so. Yeah, and I've already lost Would you like to spend conviction. it? Um, no. I want to go with it. Take the hit? Yeah, I want to take the hit. We will so save funny. it for later. Um, you immediately catch yourself. Show me how it looks for you to take one point of stress as your body just resists this speed change. I actually think, I think maybe it's not even like a body thing. I think as it suddenly shifts, I'm literally just about to finish and complete level five. Like my avatar's about to land on the final flagpole and slide down it and win. And exactly when Viper revs up and starts speeding off, I drop the game and the cartridge comes out of it before I'm able to even complete the game. And you just hear like, he's holding on too tight to punch anything. So he just kind of like headbutts the side of the <laughs> of the car, just in frustrating. And it's good. God damn it, Viper. I was close. So close. Ugh. Life is a highway. <laughs> Viper Are you listening, listening, Viper? God damn why do you always do this and he just just slots back in back of the car and just lament silently as they stare down at the loose cartridge and game dude on the floor perfect to clarify something for the future now that you know about burn 
you have to declare before a check whether or not you're going to use burn. And for every point of conviction you spend, it actually adds 10 to your stat or save value. Oh. Yes. That's very cool. If the result is a success, it becomes a critical success. Um, And everyone restores two points in conviction. But if it's a failure, then you immediately take a distortion. Oh. That is the very risk cool. is there. Oh no. You continue tearing across the skyline. And I want to ask you something, Viper. When you're approaching this train, there are ramps makeshift everywhere. There are vehicles that are stuck underneath slabs of cement. There are a numerous amount of ways that you can get onto this train. Would you like to perpendicularly jump over it and try to jump off onto the train? Or would you like to go parallel and find a ramp and jump onto the train? How you are you going on about it? From the car or jump the from car? From the car or jump the car? This is the best night of my life. Oh my god. <laughs> Real quick, also, what what is what is the light situation? Is it daytime? Is it nighttime? Because I know this it is, is more like sunset, sunset, blood sunset. red sun, halfway down, like okay. on the skyline. Yes. So uh, Viper does come with climbing gear, aka a little little grappling hook situation. So uh, Viper is going to drive up parallel to the train and put the car like is just gonna be just kind of like rambling down and like i I don't know if casey would notice depends on how much casey's paying attention but viper is like half like eye on the road kind of ish just to keep them parallel but is like finagling around and like reaching down and uh has locked the gas on permanently so there is now something jamming the gas pedal down consistently making them have sped up even more but now maintain Mm -hmm. like a cruise control and is just finagling with their belt. Looks over to Casey and goes, "Hey." Yeah, um, I, was, I was just gonna ask, uh, how we do we plan on getting the, onto the train? Rides here. What? Do you, did you did you bring did you bring climbing stuff? No, we're going we're getting on a train. Yeah. Do you have a ticket? No. Didn't think so. And like waves the grappling gun and goes like, "This is mine. This is my ticket." God. Damn it. Okay. Um, we're pretty close. We're only, I'd say we're about three feet away. That's about as like close as you can get to a moving train. We're going on it now, not at a stop. There is no stop. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen this train stop. I'm ready. I don't have a, I don't have climbing gear, but I can probably get on. I mean, you can probably jump. Hang on. Let's say a uh, rendezvous on and like points at like the car train car right in front of the one that you're on right now. So to, no matter if you jump on at the same time or whatever, you are going to rendezvous on top of that train car. And uh, Viper okay. is just cracking knuckles and shoulders and takes the grappling gun and looks behind and goes, I would hurry. I don't know how long and like looks down at like the makeshift like thing for holding their asshole down. I was like, I don't know how long this car is going to stay straight once I let go of the wheel. Okay, bye. And um, shoots shoots a little grappling thing. Go ahead and make me a speed check. Nice. You can do it at advantage because you have your climbing gear. Nice. Can you elaborate what advantage means here? Yes. So advantage means that you're going to roll two D100 and you basically take the highest or the lowest result in this. Perfect. Uh, I'll basically just do two strength checks. Uh, Sorry, speed checks. Let me roll. So that was a fail actually originally, so good. Oh wow, that is a total, like that is that is the best success. I got a nine and my goal was 60. Critical success. Amazing. So you point- I'm so cool. The, you point this grappling hook, you look over your shoulder, look back at KC and just pull the trigger and straight eye contact the entire time, you immediately just launch into action how do you get onto the train? Do you backflip? How do you do it? So uh, basically not even looking at the train, just looking at Casey. So I have turned around. So if this is the front of the car behind me, I have turned around in my seat, shot behind me without looking, winked, and pressed the trigger on the gun to start to repel me back. And kind of like in a movie, I did like the aerodynamic, like pull back with the speed of the train Mm -hmm. and just full eye contact, pull back in this like loop and little backflip at the very end to do superhero pose down onto the top of the train. We're not in one of those movies, Viper. We are 
I am. Yeah. Um, what would you like to do, Casey? Um, okay, so we're currently in the car, um, and it's just driving like almost parallel. Is it driving parallel to or perpendicular to the train right now? Parallel. Parallel. Okay, I'm gonna like clamber to the front slightly, and then. That was like, parallel. I was like, damn. And then, and then um, <laughs> I want to like very sharply turn the steering wheel of the car so that it's actually veering towards the train. And yeah. as soon as I can, just clamber onto the top so that when it slams, it almost like kind of propels me. So I have a bit of that extra um, oomph when I jump off the roof of the, Whoa. the car. Okay. Do you think you're using any of your skills to do this check? Um, or are you just jumping? I think I'm using... I mean, athletics, I think that would count as jumping, right? Absolutely. Go ahead and roll... The case could be made for strength or speed, but I think we're going to go with speed for this one. Go okay. ahead and roll me a speed check. My speed is a 30, so I need mm -hmm. to get under a 30. Let's see this if I true. can. Nope. I'm going to use burn. <laughs> it does have to be declared before the op. Yeah, before the operator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so you rolled a 54. Yes. Um, what does having a skill in athletics do in this case? So skills in Chrome are not meant to add a buff to your dice roll. That's not what they're really there for. You actually gain back conviction when you use it's your skills oh, for okay. checks. So it, it gives you the chance to do what you're best at and be able to gain something back from that. Yeah, I'm meant to be good at it, but I'm not. <laughs> so you ram the car into the train and... Viper, in this one moment, almost slowed down to a second. You watch as Casey jumps, leaps out of the car, and grabs onto one of the kind of, like, poles that are on the side of this train. Grabs with both hands, but whatever they grab just slices their hand open. Just a piece of the pole is just rusted, and you grab onto it, Tenness. slice your hand open and immediately start reaching for a better hold. You grab onto the train, but you are just... Take one point of damage as your hand slices open. About to take another one. I give you this tetanus shot. Does soak cover any of this, or would it go through soak? Actually, I have not thought about that. Um, Let's see. I believe soak is specifically for weapons. Okay. Um, but let me be sure. Oak armor, armor, reduce some of the amount of damage a character receives from an attack. Yes, this okay. doesn't count. So I'll take one damage. Take exactly one. <sighs> Viper sees this happen and, um, and like kind of rushes, not really. We should probably be rushing more than Hello? Are. Can yeah, you help okay. me up? I'm already on my way. I'm on my way. There's no, there's no rush. Like you know, very much on is. The train. I'm oh, barely God. on the train. And you get, um, and Viper is going to like just for extra safety in case you like crit fail and kill us both. Um, is going to shoot the grappling gun into the train car again, hook it onto their belt so you can't accidentally pull us off and reach out down towards you. I grab with the hand and, and one pull good you up. hand and pull up. Yeah. Okay, um, Damn it. I'm gonna have Viper make a strength check. I figured. I am a small person. I'm very small bean. I think Viper is shorter than I am. I think Viper is literally five feet tall. Mm. Love that. Failed. 35 over 20. 35 over 20. Um, you You're heavy. start to pull and... A lot of metal. You start to pull, and actually the blood from Casey's hand makes it extremely slick to try to actually get any grasp Gross. on him. Um, I'm going to say both of you take a stress from the situation as it takes Viper an extra couple of minutes to pull Casey onto the train. You are able to successfully do it. You just, both of you will take a stress in that moment. That is very fair. Oh God, this is so gross. I'm very sorry for bleeding. Was that rusty? Yes. Ugh. 
and like uh grabs like from the tool belt uh around the cat suit uh this tiny little like glass vial it looks a bit like an epipen and shoves that at your chest and goes like i'm not shooting you up but you need to take this it's just a tetanus shot i promise you this is not the first time i've come in contact with rust i'm i've i'm vexed up well thank you i guess yeah okay hold on to it tin can i feel like it's gonna happen again so let me ask you about something. Are you on top of the train? Are you in the first cart? On top of the train. Yeah. On top of the train. Okay. Still need to get uh, in the, train. the wind is whipping past you. Where would you like to go? So I'm crouched down. Um, so you said that I'm like I'm familiar with this. You kind of understand that it's just you don't know everything, but you understand that it's some sort of club, um, mm-hmm. and you understand that it's inside the train. Uh, you also would know, and you understood this earlier, you have never seen this train stop. You've heard rumors that there is some sort of ghost conductor. You've heard rumors that the cosmic entity known as the Void Space started this train, and it has not stopped since, and humans have just found a way to adapt to it. So you don't think that you're going to be stopping anytime soon, but you know that it, what you need is inside of these right. carts. Can I, from outside the train, can I see if there's any car that particularly has, like, lights, or is the whole car bumping? Everything seems pretty rusty, old, decrepit, and dark. Nice. Okay, so uh, I do know this looks a little club-ish, so I'm just gonna unzip the top of the jumpsuit to look a little bit more like I am ready to party. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, uh, so between train cars, there's usually doors. So I would, mm-hmm. like, uh, between two train cars, like, at the edge, going in the direction of the wind to kind of use that force to keep me safe and anchored to the train. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to look down, and if there is a door, I would like to, like, swing down and open it. Okay. You swing down, you open up the door. The cart inside is completely dark, as the sun is just fully set. Okay. I don't think I have night vision stuffs. Yeah. don't think you do. I have a scanner. Yeah. Would you like to scan the room? I would like to use my cybernetic scanner and scan the room. Yeah. You immediately take in the specs of this room, and what you see are dozens of tubs of water lined up. Dang. Hey, what do you see down there? The, next to the door, you kind of come to it last. You see... A person. Oh. Just a full person. Just stands there and scares the shit out of you. And with your scanner, you don't really see any colors, but once you turn it off, you just see a person leaned up against the wall, almost sleep. Hey. Hey. Huh? What? You alive? Yeah, are you? Do I feel alive? And like smacks very lightly, just like tap tap. What, 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 it, gosh. What's with the water? Where's the fun? Where's, you know, arachne? You seen them around here anywhere? I was trying to bluff, like, casually, like, who they're talking about, where they're supposed to go. I can tell you've never been here before. Um, let me go ahead and get you, are you two trying to get into I'm so glad Casey didn't see that. Excuse (laughs) me. Casey's yeah, Casey, I'm still Casey's... on top of the train. I haven't actually come down The wind is, yet. like, so loud in your ears. <laughs> I'm just, like, waiting for any kind of update, like, what's happening? Should I go in? Let me save face real quick. <laughs> so, yes, they continue. Uh, do you need a tub? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, it'll be ten credits an hour. Damn, what's in the tub? The needle. I'm about to have a stroke. Anyway, yeah, one second. Um, and like leans back out, like hops up on the sill of like where they'd like come through, leans up and goes, Hey, hurry up. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna climb down. Um, Any money. Money. Why do you need money? Hold on, just give me a sec. And it's like it's probably like usually on trains there are ladders to up up and down the um Mm -hmm. outside anyway at least between the doors so i'll just climb down that ladder like a normal person Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yes and then step in and go oh who is that this is my buddy anyway we 
need to get a tub. So uh, it's... each of you will need separate tubs. <sighs> yes. So um, annoying. Anyway, we need 30 credits. 30? Yeah. And do you want me to pay all of it? Well, it's 30 credits. Okay. I'll fish around for some credits to see what I have on me. Okay. You are able to find 30 credits. Uh, You've done missions before. You get paid a nice amount for every mission you do. Uh, 30 credits is nothing. So you fish it out. Here you go. Um, what exactly happens in the tubs? Uh, we gotta get you to one that's empty, but uh, follow me. And this person walks past you through the doors and starts opening the doors on the other train and begins their journey in. The doors from the next train shut behind them um, and you're kind of left alone in this dark train. Well, Would you like to follow them? Yeah. Following yeah. imminently. Yeah. Very close. Following imminently. You can see this person is kind of like a gaunt, but uh, very wide chested uh, person, pale skin, deep blue hair that drapes down their back. Um, and they've just got two retinas that are just blue, completely blue, that glow in the dark. Um, but as they walk through the rooms, they're kind of not waiting up for you. And you two walk by and you see these tubs. And when you look at them further, you just see bodies, people's bodies suspended in liquid. And I need you both to make me a fear check or fear save. Lord Almighty. The fear is, I think, my prime save. Yes. So prime saves in Chrome are just things that you specifically are extremely good at, and they're provided by your background. So if you fail a prime save, the entire team takes a stress, not just one person. So the entire team takes a stress. Great. Cool, 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 cool. Actually, it's a double as well. I rolled a 66. Mm. Okay, so crit. This is a perfect moment. Okay, yes. Great. Uh, You're welcome. (laughs) Critical successes and failures are not based on simply just getting a uh, 100 or getting a 99. They are based around getting double numbers on the dice. So 66, 55, 44, whatever you roll, if you succeed in your check by rolling the double numbers, it's a critical success. If you fail in your check by rolling double numbers, then you critically fail. And this turn, you rolled a 55? I rolled a 66. A 66. And I also thought was a mine. failure? Yeah. Okay. We're Perfect. breaking it. You're doing it. You're, you're, you're breaking it. Um, you look at these vats of water and the bodies floating in them. I'm going to need both of you to take one point of stress from the failure. And then... I am the best. I can't even fail normally. I've got to fail like the best. <laughs> you got to do critical. It's got to be critical. Viper, I'm going to need you to take three stress. In addition uh, to the one so, that I just took or total? No, no, no. So you s- critically fail to save. Um, you only take three stress and you have to make a panic check. Wonderful. So for a panic check, you roll a d20. If you roll over the current stress level we have right now, you don't panic. But if you roll equal to or lower, then you roll on the panic effect table. Grab a d20 real quick. (laughs) You can roll it in a roll, which is super nice. Convenient. I rolled a 19. My stress level is 16. So I'm okay. Good. Good. Um, What does taking three stress look like for Viper? The uh, fangs instinctively, uh, kind of like how you know sometimes you accidentally move your tongue and you just kind of like, um, like a viper. And uh, actually, so saying that, I think vipers are venomous. Um, yeah, they're not constrictors. Um, but yeah, so a tiny bit of like green venom shoots just out of nerves and, and shock. And uh, um, so yeah, there's the. Uh, 
little moment of like green venom like overproduction for a second and um like accidentally bites their own lip slightly um and like will like hiss in discomfort um and the whole like body all five feet flat of viper becomes very tense back ramrod straight instead of like the like loose like sauntering is now like very tight and uh eyes has a few twitches and it just absolutely tears their gaze away from the tubs and refuses to look at them and the uh the panic is heavily internal but there's some uh because viper has a cult background um and there's some there's some flashbacks coming up they're they're currently still just images coming up and and being shoved back down the suitcase is being closed we're not opening the lid on that the suitcase is slightly leaking the mental mental baggage is leaking you see someone inside one of the tubs immediately (laughs) wakes up and with the liquid begins splashing and screaming and banging on the walls of their tub trying to get out um and i need you both to make another fear save you're just trying to kill us. <laughs> what am I going to do? Fear. Say no? Okay, I passed. I got a 35 under uh, 50. My fear save is not great. 78. Okay, so this person begins shrieking, and you can hear the water going into their mouth, and they're unable to get out as they slam their fists against the side of the tub. Um, and someone runs past you, uh, Casey. You see the doors in front of the person that's guiding you swing open, and two people run in and begin, like, lifting the top of these vats in order to, like, take this person out. And they come out there, (gasps) and just the rugged breathing throws you off. Uh, go ahead and take one stress, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, take the one stress. I was looking too hell? in my feelings. Are they okay? I'm gonna like call out to one of the people helping this person or the one that's leading us. What just happened? The person that's leading you turns around and says, it's, it's fine, it happens every once in a while. It's every once in a while. Yeah. It's fine. Be cool, it's, Casey. It's fine. It'll be fine. It's fine. There's a chance that sometimes the drugs and how they mix together don't always cover if you've got deeper shit going on. The drugs deeper shit. Okay. And once you get to the end of this cart, Uh. this person opens the tops, these glass lids off of two of the tubs, slides them off to the side. They're they're on opposite sides of the cart. And they turn to both of you and say, okay, you're going to drink this and you're going to take this. And well, you'll be able to hardwire yourselves into the needle. And that's where the party is. Oh, boy. Okay. It's weird that it doesn't say eat me, but okay. Will it mess with my... And it kind of flexes the cybernetic arm? It's completely fine. It's actually a bit heavier than water. Uh, it's not actually water. It's just to get okay. the encasements of your clothes correct and all of that other kind of stuff and also help aid that overwhelming feeling that helps you immerse yourself a bit more into the experience. Okay. You have to tell me twice. And Viper is going to uh, pretend that they are not absolutely essing themselves, and uh, lowers I mean, like the cat suit just takes on this very wet look, but like lays down in their tub, like to uh, Casey, and then chugs, pops, lays back. Getting into this liquid, you do feel that it's heavier than water. It's syrupy almost, um, but it is almost room temperature. So getting into it feels like it feels like nothing, like air. And you dip yourself into it and you feel s- the stimulation crossing of both and you start slipping into darkness. KC, what do you do? Casey watches Viper for a few moments as they sink into their tub. And then I look up at the the one that guided us here. Um, very weird. I know. Hi, Casey. You heard them from a friend there. What's your name again? I'm realizing I'm taking drugs from someone I don't know the name of. Uh, I'm Alter. Alter. Okay. If I die, I'm coming for you, Alter. And I'm gonna take oh. uh, <laughs> take the drugs and, uh, and slip into the tub. Uh, okay. 
Would it be okay for me to retcon something real quick? Yes. I would just like to add one small thing that Viper would have done uh, that I didn't think of because I'm not as smart as Viper. Viper has all those little shots, and one of them, or several of them, is adrenaline because it's very useful to have medically. Uh, and Viper primes one of them by a thigh and sets a timer for an hour. Uh, unless, of course, they wake up before and take it off or something. It's not going to, like, randomly shoot them. Just has it on the thigh, locked in place, ready to go off in an hour. If for some reason they don't wake up when they're supposed to. Perfect. You both slip into this space, and there is a solid moment between the stimulation of the pill the lack of stimulation from the water and the liquid around you and where it puts your mind before the stimulation of the liquid kicks in and speeds up your heart. And you feel yourselves fall into this place. Uh, I need both of you to make me a fear save. <sighs> Terrifying. Terrifying. 79 over 50. Okay. I take a stress, huh? You do take a stress. 53 over 30. 53 over 30. Uh, you both take a stress um, as you wake up in this deserted landscape similar to the one you were just at, except before you is a large warehouse with lights and lasers coming out of every single window, open cracked window, and inside you see a sea of bodies. You both wake up on the ground and kick yourselves awake a little bit more panicked than you would like your chest is beating did not enjoy that viper like usually is, is just uncharacteristically quiet um as they gather themselves and they sit up and like look around well time to find uh Arachne, I guess. Yeah, um, I would like to get out of here as soon as possible. Well, we've got an hour, but we are unconscious, so that might only be, I don't know, might be a week of time in here, might be ten seconds, I don't know. We don't know how much time we have, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Please let it not be a week. Okay, you walk inside. As I said, you see just a sea of bodies. You see a spattering of glitter. You see augments and cybernetic creations that you've never even imagined before as people kind of meld together in this huge space. In front of you, this warehouse is huge, but through the sea of bodies, you see a large stage with lights coming off of it and standing at kind of like a DJ station is a person. You see they have long black hair with white traces in it as if they're older. Tied up in a ponytail goes down back behind their back. They're wearing a beautiful refined suit. They sit in a wheelchair, but... And, and they spin kind of like the records for this DJing gig and the music, everyone's kind of vibing to the music and dancing. It's extremely loud and they kind of put on a track and the second they see someone enjoying it, they start to rise as from behind their wheelchair, eight cybernetic legs appear and lift them up and they climb on top of this like concert venue tarp situation. and. You see them kind of disappear. When you look above that concert tarp, you see a small room, an opening, where there's no stairs to get to it, but you see a room full of people looking down and watching everyone else party. Mm, I guess that that is our, our person. A little on the nose. A little bit. Can't fault someone for having a gimmick. Great Looks music like taste, though. to get on that uh, platform. Yeah. What came with us? I want to like, check my yeah. person. Everything. All of it. Right. Okay, well, this is weird, jarring, uncomfortable. What Viper doesn't say familiar. Casey's going to boot up their game dude and just see how that works in this space. <laughs> Are you serious? You boot it up. It's really not working right now. The encasing liquid is just getting the form of everything. It's not actually transporting every single piece of technology. Damn it. So... 
pulls the like grappling gun from the thing. How far are we from this platform? Pretty like, is far. It, okay. I would say it, it is a large okay. concert warehouse. All right. Well, the only way out is through. And Viper is uh, just going to dive into the crowd and like start okay. like dancing up on people because that is how you get through a crowd. That is how you get through a crowd. I, on the other hand, I want to stick to edges of the room and just just make my way around the edge and see if I can figure out any e- exits and entrances from this place, from the main car, from the actual place we're trying to head to as well. Just trying to find out all yeah. the exit points and stuff. This feels like a video game. It does. Viper, go ahead and make me a reflex save. Whereas for KC, I want you to make me an intellect check. Okay. Reflex save. Okay. And for this, no. I will let you go ahead and use your skill for tactics in this situation. Yeah. Because you are trying to scope out entrances, exits, all of that good stuff. I mean, it's not going to help much because my intellect is very low. But let's you can see. Always use burn. <laughs> Oh, I succeeded. Okay, because my my right reflex is 25, but I rolled a two. Nice. I'm going to use one burn. Yeah, okay. So you're going to use one? Yeah, it's probably not going to be much help, but let's see. So I have to get okay, one burn. under 25. Nope, 51. Oh, okay. Should have gotten into the crowd. I'm trying to use my, my skills. One skills. This is like Napoleon Dynamite. So he's like, girls like guys with mad skills. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> So you burned, you used the burn mechanic, but you failed, meaning you immediately have to roll on the distortion table. Yeah. Would you like for me to roll for you, or would you like to roll? You should, You can roll. Let's see what I get. So distortion is basically the result of failing a panic check or failing a stat check or save when you burn. It forever changes you, but you roll a d10 on this distortion table that the game gives you. And when you receive this... This distortion effect, it will stay with you forever. So I'll go ahead and roll. Yeah. Okay. Such an evil face. <laughs> Interesting. Jesus. Interesting. You are walking on the edges of this club. The lights are blinding you. And sometimes when you look around, it's hard for you to see any distinct face, any distinct person, any distinct thing. You just see sweat and neon and muscle and bone and metal. And in the corner of the room, as you're scanning for these exits and entrances, you start to see a black ink, darker than space, begin to enter the room and fill the room up. And no one seems to notice it around you. It begins to fall. And the ink splatters all over everyone, and you start pushing to get away from it, but it starts to make its way over to you, coating everyone. Everyone continues to dance and move and writhe as this ink covers them. As it approaches you, you're still pushing and pushing to get away from it. It approaches you, and the second that you touch it, it just spreads all over your skin, all over every metallic piece of yourself into your nose, into your mouth, and you see yourself suspended in space, covered in this ink. And all you hear is a voice that says, Go forth. And like a glitch, you disappear from the space and reappear back in this club. The music is a fine, single, monotone pitch that turns back to something melodic, something with a beat that pulses the bass in your chest and reminds you that you're alive. You've been corrupted by an entity from the depths of void space. It makes you feel a little stronger, but you feel like something has a grip on your heart. You feel like You've never been able to feel any of your organs before. That's not really how humanity works. But you feel like someone is holding on to your heart. You can feel every single finger, every tendril, every tendon, and how it could possibly squeeze and you would be dead. Your body save is now increased by 10. But whenever you fail a body save, you take 2 damage. Uh. 
if this lowers your health to zero, your body erupts and transforms into a twisted biocybernetic horror attacking anyone nearby. Oh, okay. Interesting. Just die. <laughs> Just don't fail a body save. It's simple. I mean, Casey doesn't know what's going on. Casey's no. like, that was really weird. I think the meds probably mixed weird. Um, Okay, uh, and it's just going to get back to making their way through the crowd as best they can. Continue pushing through. Um, Viper, you passed your reflex check, or your reflex save, correct? Yes. You push through and you make your way through this crowd effortlessly, fluidly just glossing through the crowds, pushing towards the front. You see some very questionable things going on, but something that I will let both of you notice is that at the top of this warehouse, towards the ceiling on one of the side walls, you see spray painted just a little tiny moniker. Uh, you see vamps and two fangs spray painted um, as you both make it towards the front of this area. You see the DJing station. You see it's a huge stage with tall metal beams that seem climbable. And that tarp cover that kind of juts over top and covers the artist. And you see this room, the separate room above everyone else that looks down upon the partiers. And you think you could get there if you were able to jump somehow, or I know you have a grappling hook. So how are we doing this? Are we going quietly? Because as much as I know you love your grappling hook, that's not very subtle. I hate when you make points. It's really annoying. I mean, is there guards of any sort, or is it like just straight up like we saw that person? We saw like Arachne. We assume go up into the room. Yep, and we can't you see them from where we are. You don't see guards. You don't see anyone standing around policing anything. You see people with weapons. You see people using weapons. You see all types of people here. It is extremely loud. It is extremely raucous and unkept for the most part it is a free-for-all here i don't know if subtlety is really needed but how about this i go my route you wait a beat see if i have to fight something and then you can come in i don't know subtle okay well yeah sure you do that i'm gonna wait and see how other people are going in and out of there um, sick I'm just going to shoot up, up straight up and okay. try to just just shoot it towards the ceiling. It sticks into the metal and you give a tug on it to make sure that you have uh, some give and you do you just start climbing up? I'm just going to start like just click release the trigger to zoom. Yeah, you begin zooming up. Um, yeah. Now, for KC, you don't really see people going up there, uh, but what you do notice, you do notice there are some groups that are kind of climbing on top of the metallic beams that make up this foundational structure of the concert stage. They're just kind of hanging off for fun and, like, hanging out in front of the lights and stuff. You think that, like, that could be a viable way to get up. Yeah, that's good enough. I had a feeling we were going to have to climb. I just wanted to make sure it wouldn't be too weird and yeah i'm gonna yeah. try climbing okay uh go ahead and make me a strength check uh and you can use your skill for this uh if you would like you can use burn for this one as well but no my strength is pretty high and I, if i fail I this i feel it um, <laughs> <laughs> so i have to roll under 45 nope a 98 98 at least it was not a 99 yeah that would be bad. Yeah. Um, you start to climb up, and as you get towards the top, you feel this thing start to shift underneath your body weight, and you look down, and you see tons of people, and you see your mind fully grasps the height that it would fully be for you to fall from this from from here um you take one point of stress but you do continue climbing it takes a little bit of resolve you keep climbing as you get to the top 
Casey, you kind of have zoomed up to the top. You've taken half the time that it takes to climb it to just zoom up. Uh, and you see this room and nobody seems to eye you differently. No one seems to think of, you know, what you're doing as weird. Uh, the room just seems definitely more hushed than the rest of the party down below. You can't even tell if they could truly see you or hear you. Hmm. How far how far behind me is Casey? About oh. halfway at this point. Nice. Do I see Arachne the Arachne person anywhere? You do. Ooh. Where? You do. You see they're sat at a booth kind of in this room. This room is small. It's kind of like a small private space, a uh, private club area. So they're kind of in a booth in the back corner talking to someone else. Okay. Well, I will wait. I'll wait a little for Casey just to join me. Perfect. Casey, you kind of make it to the top of this uh, cover tarp situation. And it's a pretty simple jump. He wants to go on impromptu missions. Can at least give us a day or two to prep. And I'm just going to jump. <laughs> make the Do jump. Do it. Okay. That is going to be a strength check. Or speed, whichever one you would like. I'd rather go strength. <laughs> strength. Do it. Viper, what would you like to do for this? Would you like to try to swing in there? Are you jumping? I made it. A 17. Nice. Yeah, so uh, I make it, so I gain one, is that? You one gain conviction? one conviction. Oh, thank, God. thank God for that athletics skill. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Viper, what would you like to do? All right, so we are together again. I... So I like I point at like Arachne, and I'm like leaning against the like leaning against like the opposite wall, mm -hmm. and I think Viper is just gonna like do a little crack crack thing, and just try to very casually uh, walk. Because like the mission is that I need to find Arachne because the vamps are find Arachne. Yes, yeah, it's really just said find Arachne. Not really sure where to go from here. So uh. Just going to approach and just straight up hit them with a, hey, you come here often. Okay. You, as you get closer to Arachne, you see this uh, Southeast Asian looking dark skin, uh, black, black, gray hair, silver hair, really. This is an older, older person. Um, just vibing in this club scene, soaking it all in. Um, and they kind of just sit and as you approach them... Uh, their eyes fixate on you. And as you ask them to come here often, uh, they just kind of... I stay here, honestly. Do you come here often? Because you look a little bit out of place. First time. Oh, I can tell. You got an eye for that. I guess if you stick around here too long. Yeah, things tend to seem... A little out of control, if you know what I mean, if you're mm. new here. I like it. I like a crowd. I like an audience. Well, you'll fit right in here. I didn't catch your name. Arachne. You can sit if you would like. Viper. And this is Casey. I like gestures to a friend. Ah, what the doctor ordered. Casey, just like Casey, I feel like despite having worked with Viper a lot, the other missions he's been on has been mostly stealth and reconnaissance. So just there's a Viper turning around, like that's Casey. He's like, I thought we were being <laughs> subtle or at the very least going at diff attacking from different fronts. Okay, I guess I'm with you on this. So he kind of like takes looks, taking her back, and just goes, "Yeah, hi." This isn't really their scene. Yeah, I can tell you. You need to breathe a little bit. Let the air flow through your body. It'll loosen some things for you. I'm honestly afraid to breathe because I'm currently aware that I'm in a vat of some kind of liquid. Yeah, it takes, takes a few times to get over it. Here, have a seat. Um, my friend was just leaving, and you see Arachne turn to the friend, who was very much in the middle of a conversation, but they just, like, get up and stand and walk away. Okay, yeah, Viper's just gonna, like, sit and, like, you know, cr cross the legs, sit... Sit, pose, what's the difference, really? Um, and uh, keeps their eyes on Arachne. 
the whole time. So you two are... And you see the look around. You two are out of control, correct? You could say that. Yeah. Casey's pretty wild. Yeah, you should see me on the dance floor. Oh, I saw you. <laughs> no worries. I... Listen, there have been some disappearances. And we're not really sure what to do about them. There, Normally there's a uh, another entire warehouse that we can party in past the entertainment space that's next door. But people have been going missing. And that's not a good look for us. And apparently it's not a good look for Control either. Yeah, we heard about that. Something about... And, like, very quietly is, uh, and, like, flashes their own fangs. Mm -hmm. Of course, these are very different. Something about vamps? Yes. Uh, we think they're the problem, but we haven't heard from them in a long while. We also haven't had a disappearance in a long while either, but that doesn't mean that they're completely stopped. Would, would Viper, would, would you guys, like, would Viper and Casey know anything about the vamps? Roll me an intellect check. Oh, boy. At advantage. Thank God. For your cult background. I would like to use that. Yes. What does it look like when I use a skill again? I gain yeah, so when you use a skill that you uh, exceeded for a check such as this, you're going to gain a conviction if you succeed. Perfect. And you can roll at an advantage. Failed twice. 51. Failed twice. Um, so you do take one stress. Great. But I'm now at a 14. Nice. Solid number. You're not really sure about the vamps. You've heard about them before. You think that there's some sort of, you know that there's some sort of group that gets together. Um, but outside of just any old rebel mischievous group that hates, uh, any establishment that acts as like a governing body, uh, they're kind of just like everyone else. You do know that their signature look are kind of the teeth similar to you, uh, except more canine. They get them cybernetically altered so that they also emit poison. Um, and you just know that that's something that is a rite of passage. Right. Well, I don't like them because they're harshing my vibe and stealing my look. Very distinct, by the way. I, I like the vibe. Thank you. They work. And like... Uh... It's like the tongue flicks against a fang. Mm -hmm. They also kind of leak, but that's a different issue. <laughs> Elmo to the side. <laughs> yeah. My torso he also is harshes my vibe. My torso is metal, so you just hear a clang as you just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never learn. <laughs> this happens every day, I feel like. This happens yeah. every day. You two are very entertaining. Well, That's one word for it. I guess you don't get a lot of fresh faces in here, then. No, not up here, at least. Down there, I mean, I feel alive, and you don't really get to recognize anyone, so I'm not sure. But up here, things kind of stay the same. The good thing is there are steps leading down to the other half of the warehouse where you will need to go. There are hallways connecting between each warehouse. You are going to the third warehouse. We're in the first um, the next one is the entertainment center. Don't let it scare you, but you will need to go through there and then follow through the hallway, and that's where we think things are going on. Sounds like a plan. Um, I will have to ask, because you just said something very ominous and then immediately went past it. Don't let it scare us. What is there to potentially scare us? It's fine. It's just swings and... Uh, seesaws and things of the like it's nothing okay oh yeah viper gets it um immediately and it's just like you go there often not particularly hmm. okay doesn't sound scary to me but yeah i'll keep that in mind maybe oh boy well i'll protect you yeah. Um, again, yeah. wraps against the metal. <laughs> yes. The, the metal torso. Just his, the whole upper body just metal for the most part. Sounds and, like padding a fridge. <laughs> you know, for this I can offer like 
two thousand credits, if you, if that sounds suffice. Is that each or split between us? Sp- normally split between you, but but I can do twenty five hundred split between you two. Okay, cool. Whatever you give me, just make sure you give me thirty credits more than <gasps> Viper because they owe me. Okay. Thirty. Why am I paying for you now? It's fifteen each. Uh, yeah, you also just kind of made me jump in onto a moving train, so that's more like emotional damage. Um, oh, you are fun. What, me yeah. for making him jump on a train? Uh, Arachne is specifically looking at Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Very fair. It was not a fun experience. I do not recommend it. It was great. You're just a wuss. Cool. So yeah, Casey. as I said, give me that credits more than what you give them. <laughs> Just come Fine. back and collect them and you'll have whatever you want. Um, and you see that they reach over and click a button that activates a door. It opens up um, and you see steps leading downstairs. A lot okay. easier if we had steps to get up here. Okay. See you in a bit. Let's go. You make your way down these steps. Um, they're metallic, kind of just ring underneath your boots. You get downstairs to a hallway, a long hallway. Are you just walking? I mean, Pretty I'm. Much. I am taking scope as best I can. Mm-hmm. Isn't it just a hallway? There isn't like much to look around. Or just, just keep an eye it's on. It's a pretty dark hallway, um, okay. and it's this. This is it's a warehouse, so it's pretty empty. Okay. Um, but you don't really see anything here. There's nothing really here to be pointed out. Uh, but as you start seeing the end of this hallway, there's twists and turns kind of to get to the next area. As you see the end of this hallway, you do start to notice bright neon lights flooding into the hallway that you're in right now. Whoa. Uh... Ooh, I think that is the fun, scary warehouse. Why is it so bright? I thought it was like a playground we're dealing with. I mean... I'm pretty sure it kind of is. Just not, you know, you'll see it. Okay. Okay. Are you stepping into the room? Uh, I want to check right before we walk in. Just because mm-hmm. the game dude didn't work, uh, I'd like to pull out the cybernetic scanner just to see if it'll even turn on. Uh, it does not turn on. Cool. Don't have it. Nice. Uh, and it's just going to like flick... Uh, just in case, you never know. I'm just gonna flick their tongue against their fangs to check, make sure everything is. They've got like fresh venom coming in, and then they're just like, okay, let's go. Okay. You two phase through a threshold of a door. You get to this room, and you do see bright neons uh, lining the walls, but you also see what you see is very literally a playground. You see. Seesaws lifting people high into the air to these life-threatening heights. You see swings where people are just going forward and backwards at huge heights. Um, And you see a Ferris wheel that like juts at these crooked angles, slow and um, unmetered. And as you step through this threshold, something just like washes over you and you can suddenly hear. I need you both to make me a sanity or a fear check as oh, suddenly no. you notice everyone has earphones on. They are in some sort of silent disco enjoying their time. All you Fair. hear are the screams and shrieks of these people as they're going on these gigantic swings and being launched into the air by seesaws. And they're laughing. It's a mixture of sick laughter and shrieking. I'm and about to, to make also me a fear need save. to make an IRL fear save. <laughs> you described uh, the heights and I was like... I'm just going to go. I'm going to roll flat and just go with it. Okay. Uh, I got 50 on 50. 50 out of 50. Ooh, I made it. 23 under 30. Uh, we both don't like heights, is what this tells us. <laughs> yes. About me and Viper. Um, so, this Viper, is not the playground Viper was expecting. This is yes, so much worse. Yes, absolutely not. Viper, you do take one point of stress. That's fair. As for a second, you could hear the screams and you're able to distinguish them, but something flashes back to you of the time where you were escaping the cult you were a part of. 
and screams and how it overwhelms you. And you are kind of left in this room looking around these blinding lights and these adults who are fully just enjoying themselves, but letting out these blood curdling screams while they do it. Casey, you're completely fine. You walk in and it's exactly what you expected. Yeah. Um, He's great. Just a lot more neon lights, a lot more glitter, a lot more skin showing, and a lot more fun happening. I mean, it's pretty cool, honestly. I might want to get on one of those swings later on when we're done. Yeah, Viper looks about as green as their venom for a second, just a little green around the gills, um, except under the white face paint, and uh, is is just like, count me out. Let's get out of here as soon as possible. Where, where's where, where's the? It's trying not to look at anything. Uh, is, where's the? The next car. I'm assuming just straight ahead. Um, oh yeah. God. Okay. You do see a body by the door. It does not take you by surprise, so you do not need to make a save at this point. But from afar, you see a body slumped down next to the door, a long black coat, and scuffed up pants and boots. Hands kind of there, open, as if they were waiting for something. Oh, pay the dude. I'm paying them again. Dock it from the pay, I guess. How much? Viper's gonna kick the person slightly. You kick the person slightly and their body falls over lifeless. Never mind. Yeah. Can I check the... I'm gonna check the body for um, any signs. Actually, I'm gonna turn to Viper and be like, hey, do you wanna check their body for any signs of what could have done this to them? I mean, scanner's not working, but... Yeah, uh, intelligence-wise, I guess. Uh, should I do an intelligence check? Yes, go ahead. Okay, let me see. Intellect. Crit fail. 77 over 35. 70. We all seven. take stress because I am stupid. You Wait, we all take stress? stress? Oh, damn it. Yes, but... You're so welcome. A crit fail on a stat check gives you two stress so you specifically viper will take two stress oh so do i not take one or do i still take one um, no i okay. do not take okay. one. lucky cool. that's for saves right right okay thank goodness damn i, remember if I, load I am mine not anymore. having a good mission i don't think i load mine anyway so yeah casey you notice as viper checks over this body viper is completely spaced out as they kind of like they're just checking for material differences, kind of like patting the jacket, patting the arm, seeing if anything's different. And they stand up and they just don't see anything wrong. You do notice as the body falls over lifeless, the jaw kind of displaces a little bit and you see long canine teeth. I kind of look at Viper and just go, mm. okay, sure. And crouch down by the person just kind of hold him by the jaw and check out the teeth. Looks like they're at the very least one of the vamps, so. Oh. Yeah. Oh, right. I meant to say that. Yeah. Um, but probably not going to do much better at figuring out what exactly killed this one than you are, so let's just head in and be ready for anything. Door number three. Yeah. Knocks it open. I'm going to pull out my assault rifle. Okay. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I said, under my jacket, there's very very conspicuous bumps and lumps going on that is definitely clearly yes. weaponry you open the door and you just see a long dark hallway shadowed at the end due to all of the light in this room spilling in great i'm wearing a cat suit with a sniper rifle on my hip it's in my cybernetic leg and i can pop it out like you can pop out a thing out of a cane anyway yeah. Yeah, we're... Like a Tesla car door thing where you just have to press <laughs> on it and it comes out. <laughs> exactly. So I've got one hand right above where I would need to press just in case. And um, so we're just going to walk in. Yeah, I, I'm i going to try. Can I like? I want to listen out to see if I can hear anyone or anything Smart. first. It's clear okay. so dark. You don't hear anything. Hmm. And you know from the previous hallway you just walked down, it was fairly long. So you might have some time before you actually 
hit something or hear anything. Yeah. Okay. I speed walking. I'm gonna pull out a. I so one of the items I have is a flare. So I'm, and I have four of those. So in my in my cargo pants in each pocket, um, I probably have like two or three, and then one lone mm-hmm. one because you can't stuff too many flares in one pocket. Um, no. And he, you could try, but <laughs> so he's gonna pull one out and just like kind of kind of like a thing where you just pull on the top of it and you see a, a eerie red um, glow from the flare and it gives visibility for one hundred meters. Okay, are you point. in the are you in the hallway yet? Yes, I would have stepped into the hallway. How long are you walking? Are you just using it right now? Yeah, right now I'm just going to slowly okay, walking. Yeah. Now. So it just starts burning this eerie red light as you walk through and you don't see anything for a long time then the flare starts to whittle down to nothing and you come to a turn in the hallway well uh, didn't expect the turn it's just to chuck the uh, used flare behind him Mm -hmm. Uh, i'll pull out i'll I'll, like press my back up against the corner the turn and Try and listen again. Try to listen for anything. Don't hear anything. I'm gonna pull out another flare. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be my second one, and this time I'll pull it and then actually toss it down as far as I can. So you and toss it down. It begins to spark, and as you turn to see down that hallway, you see a row of ten bodies all wearing similar get-ups to the vamp you just saw. Long, dark cloaks, each a different face, long canine teeth, but their heads and necks are at different angles. Whatever we're dealing with here is no joke. The flare lands on the ground. It spins around on the ground and spins to a stop, continues burning, and then... Puts itself out. I feel like flares if, burn longer than that. But yeah. No, no, no. I mean, uh, uh, Viper's just like uh, I thought the vamps were the problem. I don't yeah. think so anymore. Yeah, very clearly not. Um, they maybe they were. I mean, Arachne said the disappearances had stopped. So I think what's taken out these vamps maybe just took over what they were doing. Yeah, um, that's not my issue. Um, oh. Yeah, no, flares last longer than that. That was barely a minute. Even on the way here, the first oxygen. bear lit up. You need oxygen for I mean, fire. I yeah, but we're also in a kind of mental space where physics doesn't really matter right now. That's true. Um. So the fact that our mental physics seems to be more limiting than actual physics is worrying. Um, can I see anything on the walls or anything like that? Any? Yeah, I'm just going to look around the walls and stuff. Look around on the walls and you see spray painted over and over and over and over. Give them back. Give them back. Oh, I want no. them back. Give them back. Uh, is this the same font as the vamps, like, tag? Or is it a different handwriting? Different handwriting. Oh, no. Are they all different? So each time they say give them back, is it the same handwriting? Or is it... Entirely- Seems to be the same handwriting. And you don't know if you've walked down the hallway yet, but the f- further down the hallway, it seems kind of, like, more and more erratic. Right. Yeah, um, I'm popping out the sniper rifle. Okay. I'm just going to hold it with both my hands. Okay, um, yeah, let's head down. Oh, there were disappearances, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess whoever the vamps took, somebody really wanted them back. Yeah, let's see if that's what's going on here. I don't know. Some of these seem more... I mean, look at the way the necks are bent. Uh, I'd prefer not to. Yeah, fair. As you walk down this long hallway, I need you both to give me a body save as the feeling of vomiting is extremely close to you. Real quick. Yes. X. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Amidophobia. 
didn't add that to the last oh, mail. Oh, yes. Totally I'm so forgot. sorry. I'm You're so totally sorry. You're totally fine. We didn't do anything. Uh, so let's substitute with let's just uh, do... painting. Yeah. Painting. Okay. Similar feeling. Yeah. I need you both to give me body a save. body save as the fear of the feeling of fainting begins to overwhelm you. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Oh, my body save is so low. God damn Failed. it. I failed as well. 62 over 20. So I take two harm. You do take two harm as yeah. you feel this entity squeeze your heart <clears throat> and your eyes do fade to black for a second and you feel yourself drop to your knees. Um, when Ooh. you come back to yourself, you're close oh, no, my rifle. to these bodies and I need you to take another point of stress. Ugh. Viper, you also take a point of stress as you feel very far from yourself for a second and have to stabilize yourself somehow. Um, your friend is on his knees right in front of you, so you're able to like grab onto them, but mm -hmm. you stabilize yourself and come back <sighs> to. Okay. Okay. Something doesn't want us to get closer, I think. I'm not yeah. sure. A little hard to think over here. Maybe... Well, the sniper rifles typically have a scope. Can I... I'm just going to look... I'm not shooting anything. I'm just going to look towards the end, like towards where we were walking to, if I can see anything through the scope. You use the scope to look into... Look, to look past this hallway, and you do see a room. And all you see is TV static. Great. Well... And screens. Screens and? Screens and TV static. Okay. All right, well, um... I, when I feel this squeeze around my heart, probably I cough up. I don't think I cough up any blood or anything like that, but I definitely just, it hurts to breathe for a moment. Um, and I can feel I'm feeling physically a bit depleted. So I'm going to pull out um, from my pocket uh, a stem pack and just like just jam it into my arm. Um... And there's probably like a, there's probably like had to update my arm or get a special stem pack, so it's like almost almost literally a, a USB stick. I just slam, yeah. like slam it into a port in my arm, um, and heal myself two damage and increase my strength in combat by ten for an hour. Yes, your you watch as it lights the room around you. Green fluid, kind of oils your joints and makes its way down every single vein and every robotic part of you kind of comes alight as if like green data is traveling through your blood system but every human part of you your veins and the bloodstream starts to glow green for a second as you heal oh okay i'm feeling considerably better oh okay well Try again, I guess. I see a room. There's a bunch of screens, but it's just TV static. And, like lowers the the gun again, and like I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna pop the gun back into my leg. I think I feel like I need my hands free. I don't want to like drop the gun somewhere. Yeah, so we're just gonna Head press in. on. Yeah, um, I have a feeling whatever's in there, it's probably aware that we're here anyway. Yeah, you press on, and something that you do start hearing is TV static. You start hearing the crunching, the pixels kind of coalescing together, just loud. And as you get to this room, the room at the end of this hall, you see 40 to 50 TVs. Old, kind of thick 80s, 90s TVs with screens uh, pushing outward almost to like a third dimension uh they all are staticking and they flicker on the static starts rolling in black and white waves and keeps rolling from the bottoms of the tv to the top tv until you start to see a form and you as you step into this room feel the threshold cinch itself shut. You feel almost like a door shut behind you. Great. When you turn around, Gosh. it's completely clear. 
When you turn back around to these screens, you start to see the makings of a face. An almost childlike face appear. Oh no. And you hear... Are you... are you here? Are you, are you gonna join me? Um... Hey, hey kid, uh... Join you for what? They didn't want to join me. They, they didn't want to join me and they couldn't bring them back. Are you gonna join me? Press pause. Purpose. No, no laugh. Okay, well, um, Viper's not great with kids. Um, did you want to join us instead? Come out here. You, you, you have to come in here. Otherwise, I, I can't come out there. I've tried. Oh. I've tried, and it doesn't it doesn't work. I, I've tried to come out there, and it doesn't work. I've tried to come out there, okay. and you see their voices start hey, to hey, glitch hey. as a face starts poking, pushing out of these TV screens. Hey, kid. Um, it's okay, Ring. We're, we're here to help. Yeah. So bring who back? My family. Ah. What happened to your family? Are you going to bring them back? We'll try our best. Um, Casey's going to like crouch down to be at their level and like take a knee. Do you know what happened to your family? Where they where they went? Well, it's just I wasn't supposed to be here. I I wasn't supposed to be here, but I followed them here because I thought they were trying to run away from me. And 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 something happened to them. And now I'm here. Oh, uh, why would they run away from me? Why would you think that they'd run away from me? The same reason they ran away from me. And you see a finger pointing, and you see them pointing at the hallway behind you. Okay. You're not, you're not scared of me, are you? Nah, kid. You're not the scariest thing we've seen today. Yeah. Like I said, it... If we can help, I'm always going to try. My least favorite thing is seeing a kid in distress. Then bring them back. Okay. Um, did 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 your your family your parents? Uh, no. Or... No. Okay. Who are we looking for? Well, I I had three brothers and a sister. They're gone. Did... Did they go Just in any particular... Did, did you see them take uh, a pill and a little bit of liquid and lay down in a tub before you guys got in here? Yeah. Okay, well then maybe they're just in the other... In the other... In the other warehouse. Maybe they're just partying a little bit, you know? Sometimes you lose track of time in these places. I... I they would be here. They would oh. be here helping. They wouldn't... They wouldn't leave me. Okay. And this voice, just saying they wouldn't leave me, continues repeating over and over and over. And you hear, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave me. They wouldn't leave me. Bring them back. Bring them back. Bring them back. And the voice gets louder and yeah, louder. Yeah, kid. Hey kid, we're gonna bring them back. We'll bring them back. Just relax, calm down. We can't do anything. If you kick us out, we'll bring them back. They said they would bring them back too. And the voice distorts. Oh, well. And in front of you, the bodies that you just passed, you kind of glanced at their faces. You see holographic versions, just 2D versions of the vamps you just saw appear in front of this huge wall of TVs. And the vamps with their heads and necks at different angles straighten and look at you and this kid oh, just orders join us and yells mm. I'm going to say we're entering combat here so I'm going to need everyone to go ahead and make me a speed check speed okay success yes perfect so in chrome a success means that the operator acts before the enemy whereas a failure means that you act afterwards huh. 16 under 60. Nice. Uh, I failed. 51 over 30. Okay, so you go after this TV Templar here. So, 
Viper, what yep. would you like to do? Can't you see it. eight of these holographic 2D versions of vamps appear before you. You also see some other faces as well uh, that appear. You're not sure if they're control agents, but they look very, very similar to your, like, cybernetic makeup. The kind of people that control recruits. Right. Okay, great, cool, great, that is amazing. Um, so they're, like, actually in this space, right? They're just, like, holograms, they're not, like, in the TV. Yes, you are, so to describe the layout of the room, it's a kind of large warehouse, smaller than the previous concert space, but there are literally, like, dozens of TV stacked on each other on this back wall and this kid has erected like little 2D versions of the people he's drained in front of you so they're standing like directly in front of you like on the floor on the ground in front of you how do you fight a hologram so anyway I started blasting Viper is going yeah. to shoot out some of the TV screens because it's the only tangible target it's not, it's not aiming not aiming for like the kid, just trying to like shorten the range. So it's very actively like shooting the, the the TVs that are like, I don't know, like giving it its little aura or something. I don't know, I don't know what else to do. Yeah, absolutely. Make me a combat check. Yeah. I was looking forward to biting something. I can't bite these. <laughs> Ugh, 50 over 40. Okay, so you start shooting um, and you start hitting the plastic frames of the TV is not actually the screens um, and in some cases the bullets actually ricochet uh, but it fails great um, panicked yeah panicked in that moment the kid starts to cry and the great. tears begin coming down in like this static in forms that tell you that they're crying like these huge giant Studio Ghibli tears um, but these holograms are gonna rush forward you see they don't run like people they just move forward directly in front of you and swing at you I'm going to need both Viper and KC to make a reflex save as it's making a melee attack to just like reach out and shatter glass in your direction glass yes it's like hologram Ooh. glass it's fine it's fine okay well it's a said, 52 right? over 25 so it better be fine 94 wow. over 50. Worse. oh never mind you and no no i i failed that um and everyone takes a stress because that's my stats that's my main in save fact. so Great. Um, the hologram, gl holographic glass shatters in front of you, and another version of this person appears directly before you. Um, as the glass just like slices, lacerates your skin. Um, both of you are going to take a standard two damage. Does my from this. I take no damage because my soak is a plus yes, three. Yes, the soak is plus oh, three. Oh wait, what's my soak? So clangs against the uh, the metal of my arm. And you see just one shard, just graze, just under the eye of Casey. Yes. So I take one damage. You take one damage. I need you both to make me a sanity check as this kid screams, shrieks, and all of the screens begin to flash to one thing. And for each of you, it's different. For you, passed. Casey, it is something... Uh, oh, you passed. Great. Um, for both Casey passed. and Viper, oh. perfect. You both see flashes of your past in one screen happening on in, in close to high definition in front of you as high definition as 90s tvs can get um but you immediately snap out of it um casey oh, yeah. it is your turn right so these holograms are right in front of me if i move past them can i i want to like see if i can just subtly like brush against them to see if i can feel any physicality to them yeah um, as I um move. You brush past them, you do. They feel like just glass. Perfect. Feels extremely shatterable. In that case, as I brush past, I'm going to immediately do a full um, 180 and end up behind them and pull out my revolver and just fire point blank do um, it. into the back okay. of one of them. It would be really check. funny if you don't make it. Yeah, it would be. Um, but let's hope that's not the case. So I used a stim pack, so my have to roll under 65 now. Yes. Um, Let's hope I do. 
Yeah, 21. The fire Great. point blank in the back of one of them. You fire point blank, the bullet resounds in this room and it shatters the one you were right in front of and one that was standing directly in front of that. So there are eight total. Um, you've knocked out two of them. Man, I could have oh, shot yeah. at them. Perfect. This is true. This is true. Uh, it's okay because it's back around to your turn. Um, Yay. Unless, uh, Casey, did you want to do anything else? Um, what else can I do? So with combat in Chrome, you have two major actions that you can take. Um, you've attacked, which is a major action. Uh, you can reload. Um, you've already moved a little bit, but yeah. moving up to half your speed in meters is basically an action. Okay. So after showing those two, I'm going to move over to just the next group with the rest of my movement. And yeah. he's already attacked. I can't reload, right? You can reload. It would be another major action. Okay. Yeah. And you get you get two of those. Okay. Cool. So then I will reload as well. Yeah. Perfect. You reload. We are back around to Viper. What would you like to do, Viper? I'm gonna shoot. I saw the sniper rifle, but I mean, gun is gun. This is true. Let me see. Actually, it's you said that's like glass. Yes. Oh well, fighting that would probably suck. Um. <laughs> so yeah. Um. I'm going to shoot. I'm just from where I am. I'm not gonna move. Some of them are, you know, right... Are, is there still some right in front of me? Well, one right in front of you, yes. One. In fact. Just... Okay. Let's roll combat. 31 under 40. Got it. Nice. Okay, so you shoot a bullet, um, and it shatters two of them. Nice. At so a certain angle. Two. 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 Nice. Yes. These two are kind of on the outskirts of the room, but you've got those two and this kid um is there anything else you would like to do with your turn you can reload you can move reload Just okay reload. immediately reload the kid is going to you see they keep screaming continue crying this room is full of just this cacophonous noise that makes your head feel like it's going to implode just shatter um and it, you see two more holograms appear that look like you both of you. Oh, good. Yes. They're going to move forward and try to hit you. I need both of you to make a reflex save. Yeah. Uh, okay, reflex. I have to get under a 50. Nope, 76. I got and, a 50 over 25. And everyone okay. takes a con conviction because I uh, yes. reflect reflexes. It's my stress. Thing. Okay, um, so both of you... Both of you go ahead and make... Uh, both of you already take a stress for failing, but you take another stress for that prime save. And you also will both take two damage. And my soak takes it. <laughs> yes, yeah. it does. Just going to slash it against I just my, take one. Uh, Perfect. Gross. I need... You know what? I need Casey and Viper. Both of you make me an intel intellect check. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Oh, crit fail. 77. Over oh, 35. no. Okay. I think I'm a little too out of I got a 69. I failed, but I got a 69, so that's pretty good. That's um, like a win. <laughs> that's um, a win in a way. <laughs> uh, Viper, I need you to take two stress from that failure. And Casey, you will take one stress. Something that occurs to both of you as you appear in front of yourself with this hollow glass. You remember what your mission was, and then you're frozen in fear as these creatures shatter in glass in front of you. Um, it is back around to Wait, Casey, what was I our believe, mission? To find out who was doing this. Technically, we found out we didn't have to stop them. This is true. It is back around to Casey. Me? Okay. Yeah, Casey's gonna stagger back, and I'm gonna use my movement to... Actually, so I'm right next to a few anyway, because of my mm -hmm. original um, maneuver. So I'm going to again fire at them with my revolver. Okay. Angling to see if I can take two out at the same time. Combat check. Yeah. Uh, 38 under 50, well, 38 under 65. Nice. Um, yeah, okay, so you fire and shatter too. You shatter yourself and you shatter another one of the maps. Um, 
a shame you're very good looking, but I need to go. Um, and I'm going to use the rest of my moves to head back towards where I remember the door being. But yes, I do remember you... the feeling of some kind of door shutting. So I want to see if I can get out. Okay. You're able to get to the door pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but it is back around to Viper's turn. What would you like to do? You just saw the glass shattering of two hollow glasses next to you. And you turn and see Casey uh, running away. What would you like to do? You still have the one in front of you. I am running away and following Casey. Start running away, following yeah. Casey. You use your movement, you get to this door. You have another major action you can take if you would like to interact with this door threshold situation. Is the door, like, locked? You touch it, and it's just like an open hallway, but... It feels similar to the glass that you just I'm a shoot shattered. It. I'm gonna shoot it. Absolutely, go for it. Combat check. I'm gonna shoot it. I made it 36 under 40. 36 under 40. You pull out and you pull out your uh, your sniper rifle and you just shoot the glass in front of you, Casey. You kind of bow out. What you do here is the loud shrieking of the shot getting louder, louder, and louder and filling the room. Are you just running? Yeah. I mean, running, but also being like, we will send someone. It's just, what's your name? But it's still running. It's absolutely booking it. It's like, what's your name? That's Crying. That. Tears. Great. Screaming. I'll write that down. You both run. I need you both to give me a sanity check or sanity save as you leave. Uh, I, yeah, no, it's too low. For 52 me. over 35. Okay. 38 over 25. You both take a stress as you run. You're tripping over yourselves. You're falling over these bodies. You're trying not to look at them. You're getting your way, making your way through the hallway, feeling it out, and you make it back to this room full of screams. Great. You did it. 2,500 credits um, are instantly cashed to your account when you go back up the steps to meet Arachne. You feel yourself, your mental condition whittled down from just seeing this child hearing the screams. But that is your life as an operator. And you head out of the club, fall asleep, wake up in the tubs, and you hear another chirp on your communicator, another mission delivered to you. It's just an ordinary day. And that's where we're going to end this session. Oh, God. <sighs> that's it. Ooh, okay. Wow. All right. Well, what an adventure. Yeah, that was a journey. It God, was. The conviction just started going down real quick. <laughs> down. All the way down. All right. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for playing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you both introduce yourself. Let's start with Brandy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Brandy Rose on Twitter at the Brandy Rose on Instagram as Brandy Rose Official and on Twitch as Cutest Patoo. You guys might see me from some game design TED Talks on Twitch where I teach game design. I also do a lot of stuff on uh, production and creative production as that is my job. Um, I creative produce uh, APs as well as talk shows, and I am the head of the Patoot Podcast Network, which is at Patoot Podcast on Twitter. Uh, so make sure you hit me up. So make sure to keep up with everything that I'm doing uh, on Twitter at The Brand Euros, and you can buy games that I have made as well, partially also uh, on my own show um, on cutestpatoot.h.io. And I will hand off to the amazing Drac. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, hi. I'm Drak or Draconics. So you can find me on Twitter at Draconics. That's D R A K O N I Q U E S. Uh, I played Casey. Uh, that it, that was a ton of fun. Um, what am I up to? Honestly, when this comes out, I don't know what I'll be up to. The only thing I know for sure is that I'll probably be on Table Story on Tuesdays at four PM Eastern in a uh, homebrew campaign called Kingmakers. Um, it's a uh, very much if you. Content warning for basically uh, emotional damage, but very high stress um, throughout the whole thing. So keep keep an eye out for that. Um, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, please do watch. It's high fantasy with a lot of a lot of costs for the magic we use. Um, 
It's really good. I'm also the co-founder and event organizer of Friends Roll Dice. So if you follow Friends Roll Dice on Twitter or Friends Who Roll Dice on Twitch, you'll see some of the things I've had my fingers in, um, in the back behind the scenes and stuff. Uh, but other than that, just follow me on Twitter um, to figure out what I'm doing at any given moment. And I'm going to give it over to the illustrious GM, the control Lexi. Yes, uh, my name is Lexi, otherwise known as Black Girl Mage. You can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Black Girl Mage. I do a lot of D&D prep, I do a lot of tabletop talking, and I do a lot of Magic the Gathering stuff. But if you want to know what I'm up to, the best thing to do is just follow over there because I'm either, you know, working on this show um, and obsessing over Chrome and how amazing it is, or I am working on um, currently a uh, an all-black Strixhaven HBCU-inspired game called The Strix that is going to have an amazing cast, some originally composed music, and just a stellar lineup. It's going to be great. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything that I do. That's where you can find me. And thank you for watching Kill Screen on Roll, on Utopia. It's a buy roll on Utopia. It's amazing. <laughs> It is. All right. See you guys next next episode. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye.